Hey guys, welcome back to Pop em Up Chem, and we are looking at the ionic product of water today. Please, if you haven't already, comment below, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, share the channel with anyone you think needs it, and check out our other channels, Pop em Up Food and Pop em Up Life. Links and timestamps will be in the description. Let's get on with it. Okay, so. Today we're going to be looking at what the ionic product of water is, or KW as it's often called, how it can change with temperature and what that really means for the concentration of hydrogen ions and OH minus ions. Little refresh question just to get us started though about ethanoic acid including a definition and a reaction. Pause the video here so you can get started with that. Okay then, so our first part is define the term weak acid and state the equation for the reaction of ethanoic acid and water. So we know that a weak acid is any acid that exhibits partial dissociation. That meaning that the CH3COOH is going to react with H2O but be in equilibrium. So we're going to remove that proton and have it with H3O+. Plus but the equilibrium is going to lie to the left hand side because it's a weak acid. The next part is the reaction of vinegar, which is ethanoic acid with calcium carbonate. Here we've got CaCO3. Always we're going to form the salt, so it's going to be Ca, ch 3 co 2 because Ca is 2+, plus, plus carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so what is the ionic product of water? Well, we know that water can act as both an acid and a base and the H plus is basically the same as H3O plus and because of this equilibrium we can see that H2O is going to break down into H plus and OH minus and in pure water they're going to be of equal concentration in fact we can draw an equilibria constant just like we did in the last unit which would be H plus OH minus over H2O and obviously we know H2O pure liquid is going to have a value of 1 so our Kc for water is going to be equal to H plus times OH and this is by definition the value of Kw it's basically the equilibrium constant for just water now at SATP that is going to be a value of 1 times 10 to the minus 14 that's actually in your data book look and we're going to be doing a few calculations with that expression this lesson but first let's look at calculating H plus and OH minus of pure water what are those concentration values just by having this value of the KW of water we know that H plus is going to be equal to OH minus concentration right because it's a one-to-one -one reaction and that means we can treat them for the calculation as equal. So we can say that it's H plus squared, or if you like, we could say that it's OH minus squared is equal to the value of KW. So H plus squared equals one times 10 to the minus 14. All we do then is then do one times 10 to the minus 14 square rooted. And that's going to give us the concentration of H plus ions. Now we're going to use a very similar calculation like this repeatedly. And that gives us 1 times 10 to the minus 7. Now, if you'll remember calculating pH, you know that 1 times 10 to the minus 7 is pH 7, which makes sense, right? It gives us pH 7, and we know that this is water. So water has a pH of 7, and this corroborates that by the concentration of H plus in water being 1 times 10 to the minus 7. This value does change with temperature. Um, because of the nature of the reaction the dissociation reaction and we can just think about it in terms of a simple equilibria h2o breaks down into o h plus and oh minus okay fine now depending on whether this is an endothermic or an exothermic reaction it's going to shift in one direction when we change the temperature it just so happens that this is an endothermic reaction going from left to right and so as we increase the temperature we're going to increase the concentration of these two and we'll come back to that idea later in the lesson firstly let's do a couple of questions just to get you warmed up 
So give an expression for the ionic product of water. Pause the video here to give yourself a moment to try that. Pop them up. Good, hopefully here you just got that H plus times OH minus equals one times 10 to the minus 14. That is ATP anyway. Next question, I want you to calculate the H plus concentration at 273 Kelvin when at 273 Kelvin KW is equal to 1.1 times 10 to the minus 15. Pause the video here to give yourself some time for that. Pop them up. Using the same process I used before, which is our expression for KW, except this time equals to 1.14 times 10 to the minus 15. I just do H plus all squared is going to be equals to that value. And so there I just do for the H plus is 1.14 times 10 to the 15 all square rooted, which equals 3.38 times 10 to the minus eight. Okay, for the next question, giving you two different values here for KW at different temperatures. And I want you to use these values to make a comment on whether the dissociation of water is endo or exothermic using those values. And the little tip here is if you think about this in terms of the equilibrium, that should help you with your answer. Pause the video here to give yourself some time for that. Pop them up. Okay, quite simple here then. We can just compare the concentrations of H plus and OH minus at each temperature. And clearly we see that the concentration of H plus and OH minus at the higher temperature is larger. What does that indicate? Well, that indicates that as we increase the temperature, we're going to increase the concentration of our products in the equilibrium. Now, if we think back to our equilibrium, then we know that if we increase the products, then as we increase temperature, then that must mean the reaction going from left to right must be an endothermic reaction. Okay, let's try using this relationship in a question. So here, we wanna find the OH minus of two moles of sulfuric acid. So we know sulfuric acid is diprotic, so that means that we're going to have a total of four moles per decimeter of H plus ions. And then once we have that, we're just going to plug that value into our KW equation to find the concentration of OH minus. We know that KW is the concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus is equal to one times 10 to the minus 14. So because we know the concentration of H plus is four, we just rearrange the equation to find OH minus and that gives us a 2.5 times 10 to the minus 15 moles per decimeter of OH minus. Simple as that. All we're doing is using that simple relationship to find unknown concentrations. So why don't we get you doing some questions and test you out on that. First question then is what is the concentration of H plus in a 0.15 mole per decimeter solution of sodium hydroxide? Pause the video here to give yourself some time for that. Pop them up. Brilliant. So hopefully you realized NaOH has one OH minus group and therefore we have an OH minus concentration of 0.15 moles per decimeter. All we do is plug that into our KW expression. Remember, KW is OH minus times H plus equals one times 10 to the minus 14. So it's gonna be one times 10 to the minus 14 over 0.15 is gonna equals our H plus, which comes out to give us a value of 6.67 times 10 to the minus 14 moles per decimeter. Okay, let's try another one then. So here is a one mole per decimeter solution of HCl. So find the hydroxide ion concentration here. Pause the video to give yourself some time for that. Pop them up. Once again, HCl is a simple monoprotic acid. So we know we have a H plus concentration of one mole per decimeter. 
We know that 1 times 10 to the minus 14 equals h plus times oh minus. So 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 1 is going to equal oh minus. Nice and easy calculation there then. Our oh minus concentration is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Well, I always say practice makes slightly better. So let's do one more for good measure. So here I want you to find the concentration of H plus in a three mole per decimeter solution of barium hydroxide. Pause the video here to give yourself some time for that. Pop them up. So calculation here exactly the same. The only thing we had to recognize was that barium add 2 OH minus per molecule. So we have an OH concentration of six moles per decimeter. So one times 10 to the minus 14 equals H plus times OH minus, which means one times 10 to the minus 14 divided by six is gonna give us that H plus concentration, which gives us a value of 1.67 times 10 to the minus 15 moles per decimeter. Fantastic. Okay, now that we know how to find the concentrations, we want to introduce the term pOH. And unsurprisingly, this is very similar to pH. So pH, remember, is minus log of the H plus. pOH is just minus log of the OH minus. So the pOH scale is kind of inverse to the pH scale, uh, going from 0 to 14, where 14 is a very strong acid. So we can imagine that if we take the pKW, which is obviously going to be minus log of 1 times 10 to the minus 14, we can begin to see that there's going to be a relationship here. Because we know that Kw is H plus times OH minus, if we take the log of this whole equation, we're going to find that we get pKW is equal to pH plus pOH equals 14. And this relationship here is a really, really handy shortcut that we can actually use to save us some time. Let's have a look at applying this to an example though. So here the question is asking us to find the pH and the pOH, put the information that we went through on the last slide up here as well. So H2SO4 is a diprotic acid, so we have a H plus concentration of four moles per decimeter. Then I'm just gonna use my K W value. So we have one times 10 to the minus 14 is gonna equal our H plus times OH minus concentration. I know that my H plus concentration is four, so I can do one times 10 to the minus 14 divided by four equals the OH minus concentration, which is 2.5 times 10 to the minus 15. Then remember the question isn't just asking for concentration, we need to find pH and pOH. So all we do for that for pH is gonna be negative log of four, which is going to be z minus 0 0.6. We can have that because there's a high concentration of OH. pOH is just gonna be negative log of 2.5 times 10 to the minus 15, which is gonna give me a value of 14.6. Again, not usual numbers, but this was a very concentrated sulfuric acid solution. Okay, so let's get you doing a question and see if you can find an even shorter way to have the same outcome. So you're looking at a sodium hydroxide solution here and I want you to find the pH and pOH. Pause the video here to give yourself some time to do that. Pop them up. So firstly, we can get finding the pOH out of the way because we can just do negative log of 0 0.15, which is going to give us a value of 0 0.824 for the pOH. Now, what I can do here is I can then go through each step using the Kw to then find my concentration, to then find my pH and do um, it that way. Or we can just use this bottom relationship here and we can say that, well, pH and pOH must equals 14 together. And so therefore pH must be 14 minus 0 0.824 which gives us a pH of 13.176 or 13.2 to three significant figures. All right, let's do some more questions. Okay, so 
find the pH and pOH of 0.5 mol per decimeter of potassium hydroxide solution. Pause the video here to give yourself some time for that. Pop them up. So I'm not gonna judge you on which method you took here, but you can easily find the pOH to give yourself 0.031 for pOH. And you could have either used the KW method, that's completely fine or you can just use 14 minus POH equals 13.699. Okay guys, so obviously takeaways from here is our KW expression, but also the relationship between the concentration, pH, POH, and OH minus concentration. The more that you can interchange those and become familiar with those, the better as we go further into the unit. Make sure you're completing questions so that you can cement your understanding before you move on. Thanks for watching guys. Comment below, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon to get those notifications. Please share this channel, check out our other channels, and as always, practice makes slightly better.